Hey, it's Alex. I'm the owner of House of Shaves Barbershop here in Jacksonville. I've been a barber since 2013. And in this video, I'm going to show you how you can shave with an electric razor instead of a traditional razor or straight razor. A couple of reasons why you may want to think about using an electric shaver instead of a razor is if you get irritation when you shave or you're, if you're prone to getting ingrown hairs, razor bumps, then you may want to try shaving with a electric razor instead. So what is an electric razor? If you've never seen one before, uh, a lot of them look like this. This is a professional quality one. I'll make, I'll make some other recommendations on one that are a little bit cheaper. I like this one because it has the uh, UV disinfecting lid on it. And when you put it on, it starts disinfecting. So if you're a barber and you're using this on multiple clients, you want to clean it in between with disinfectant. This also take it to another level with this UV lid. Um, this one is pretty expensive. It's probably around $200. This is the double foil shaver. As you can see, it has two foils. And I'm, I'm going to take this off so you can see what that looks like. So basically, almost every electric razor that I know of, well, there's two main types. There's the rotary ones that spin. There's usually three heads. And then there's these, which are foil shavers. And they're called foil shavers because it has these cutters that are underneath. And then it has these foils, which go on top. And these foils are what grab the hair and line it up so that the, the cutter that's underneath can actually shave it off. And there's a lot of different types of these. Um, I've used many different kinds. The one on the cheap end, ranging from $30 or so, all the way up to the $400 brawn top of the line shaver. And I tend to like this brand, which is uh, Babilis. And I also like uh, Andes and Stylecraft and Gamma. When it comes to shavers, these types, they're all very similar. When you go on the higher end of the price spectrum, you're probably just paying for some additional features, maybe, maybe a faster motor and things like that. With this, I'm going to show you how to use this type specifically. They also make a single foil version of this. So maybe if you don't need, if you're not shaving your full face and you just have a beard, for example, then you can actually save some money and just get the single foil version of this or a cheaper one. And that, because you don't need all of the coverage. So I like to use a double for haircuts and for shaves because it just does more work. There's two blades as opposed to one. But every now and then, we in the barbershop, we use a single version of this too, especially above the mustache area where it can be difficult to get both foils. But that's kind of why these are angled like this for areas where, where it may be difficult if it was just straight to get the full two foils in there. Also above the ears, if we're doing a skin fade, for example, that's where having a little angle like this really helps. But there are some foil shavers out there that are just straight across. There's nothing wrong with that. The most important thing to remember with the foil shaver is that it is still a razor, so you want to be mindful of the pressure. You can still get ingrown hairs from this, although I think it's a lot less likely. I, I do actually think that this in some ways gets closer than a even a straight razor, and that's because we're going to be using this against the, hair, against the grain, meaning if my hair is growing down, the only way this is really going to get close is if I go in the opposite direction. Where with a straight razor or, or a regular razor, I would usually recommend to people to shave with the grain, so with the direction of the hair growth. Or if you want to get it a little bit closer, you can shave across the grain, so perpendicular to the hair growth. And not very many people can shave against the grain without getting a lot of irritation or, or ingrown hairs. So I don't usually recommend shaving against the grain when it, with a razor, but with a foil shaver, that's not a problem. <clears throat> the main drawback to using this type of razor is that the hair needs to be really short in order for that hair to feed into the foils and to grab it. So that means that you want to do this pretty regularly. You may have to do this more frequently than if you shave, for example. So like when I shave for with a straight razor, I typically only need to shave every two to three days. But when it, when it comes to the uh, foil shaver, if your hair gets too long, it's been about a week since I shaved, then that this is probably actually going to tug and snag, with even just my hair being at this length. So I'm going to be taking my 
this hair down. I'm keeping the goatee today, and I'm going to take everything off with the foil shaver, but I'm going to have, still have to take all of this down. That's one of the cons of using the foil shaver is that it does, it, it can take a little bit more work in terms of prep because unless you are keeping up with it and doing this every day, for example, if you go a few days without shaving and now your hair is too long, you may need to trim it down before you can use this. Otherwise, it might snag and pull. There's some foil shavers out there that have like a cutter in the middle. This one doesn't, but the cutter can actually help if if you have if your hair is maybe a little bit too long. That cutter that's in the middle can actually grab that and cut it, and then the foil will actually shave it down. One quick tip with the foils. So these are actually very very fragile. The foil shavers the foils that are on the foil shavers. So you want to inspect your foil regularly. And if it comes with a lid, always keep the lid on whenever you're not using it. Because all it takes is one tiny little hole that's not supposed to be there. And now that, that cutter, that's, that blade that's underneath is making direct contact with your skin. And, it's, and it could seriously irritate your skin or even cut you. I, I learned that lesson the hard way doing haircuts in the shop. I was wondering why my client's head was bleeding and I found out it's because I had a tiny hole in the razor that wasn't supposed to be there. So I would recommend you regularly inspect the foil. You can get just the replacement foils and blades. You don't have to replace the full machine. Just keep an eye on the foil. If, if you're finding yourself having major irritation after using one of these, you're either pressing down way too hard or there could be a hole in the foil. So just be on the lookout for that. The first thing I'm going to do is take this all down to about a one, line it up, and then I'm going to trim these hairs down because these are way too long. I'll, I'll actually show you right now. <laughs> it's probably going to hurt, but I'll show you right now what it looks like to try to use this before you take this hair down to the proper length. So it is cutting, but it, it definitely is pulling a little bit. I'll just do this side so you can see. Yeah, so it's not even cutting anything down there because that hair is too long. So as you can see, it didn't really do much. Um, and this is actually one of the more powerful shavers on the market. So it's not that there was a lack of power, it's just that this hair is too long. It's not even being fed into the foils for the, the shaver blades to actually grab it. So that's why you gotta take all this down. And, but you only have to do that if you have gone a long time in between shaving. If you just did this yesterday, as long as that hair is short, then this should be fine. And I'll show you the difference after I take all this down, how much faster this process is. And here's a tip if you have any kind of facial hair that you're trying to keep, always use a trimmer to line it up first because if you just go in there with a the shaver, it's going to be much more difficult to get a nice, crisp, straight line. So I always like to make my line, it's kind of like a rough draft, tracing it out with the trimmers, and then I'll go and shave it with the razor. And that combination usually gives you much sharper, cleaner lines than just doing this with the razor alone. When it comes to the top of the mustache like this, a lot of guys like to leave this natural, and, but I, I think it looks a little bit better if you do a little bit of a line. You don't have to go down too far, but just a little bit of a line I think makes a big difference. I'll show you what that looks like. Personally, I think it's a little bit better, but do whatever you want. <laughs> All right, so now we got the goatee outline. I'm gonna use these same trimmers. You could do this with clippers too. If you don't have trimmers at home, then you can actually use clippers instead. They might not work as well, but you can do the same thing. So you can turn it over and make a line like this. So I'm gonna do this with trimmers since I think this is the best tool for this. And I'm just gonna take all this down to as short as I can. And that's gonna make the process much smoother, much more comfortable and faster with the shaver. You wanna be pretty thorough with this process if it's been a while since you've shaved because even just one missed hair is gonna not get cut by the shaver. But you can always go back at the end and just double check. All right, so now that we got all that taken down, I probably missed some hair. Now we just go over everything with the electric shaver and get it nice and smooth. You can always stretch the skin when you're using an electric shaver. Just like with a traditional razor, it will help tighten the skin and it'll make the razor cut a lot smoother. But just remember to not use too much pressure because this is still a razor and it can irritate you. 
The nice thing about using this though is that like with a razor, uh, I like to shave with a straight razor, um, you can pretty much go as fast as you want and not have to worry about cutting yourself as long as there's no holes in the foil that aren't supposed to be there. And as long as you're not using too much pressure, you can go pretty, you can go pretty quick with this. And basically you want to listen to it. You can also feel it with your, with your hand. If it feels smooth and you don't hear it cutting anything, then that, then you're done. You move on to the next area. So I'll show you the difference of the sound, what this sounds like versus one area that's done versus another area. So you, you hear it didn't really make much on that side. This is this side I haven't done yet. So this is done. Still got some work to do here. And you can tell the difference with just the sound. Try to pay attention to the direction of the hair growth because this will work best if you're going directly against the grain. You don't have to just you don't have to just go in one direction though. You can try different different directions. That's what I'm doing because my hair sometimes changes direction depending on where the type where it is on my face. So try different ways until you don't hear it cutting anything anymore. And that's most of it. I missed a couple hairs down here. I gotta just make those shorter with the trimmers. But dude, we're pretty much done. And the only thing that I thought about so that I forgot to mention with this is that when, if you use this, it's definitely gonna be very, very smooth. However, you might find that shaving with a razor is just a little bit more smooth. And I think the main difference is this is mainly just getting the hair. But when you shave with a razor, not only is it taking the hair off, but it's also taking off the top few layers of your skin. So it's almost like getting a facial every time you shave. So that's gonna be one of the main differences that you might find if you switch from the razor to something like this, is that it can get very, very, very smooth, but it might not be as smooth as using a razor because you're not getting those other benefits and this is not also good at getting those really, really soft hairs. This is going to work well for very coarse hair. But like hair around your cheeks or things like that, this isn't going to grab that that well compared to a razor, which basically just takes everything off. So keep that in mind. You can do both too. Sometimes I will alternate. I will shave with a razor. And then a few days later, I don't feel like shaving, but I'll grab this and take it down with this instead. And like I mentioned earlier, there's a little bit more prep work involved if you're going to use one of these, where a razor, you put the, the lather or the shave gel on and then you start shaving. Where this, if your hair is a little too long, then you're going to have to trim that down first, down first. So just keep that in mind too. If you have a partner that gets mad at you for making a mess in the sink, this might be <laughs> make it worse. Um, I like to shave in the shower um, just because it all falls down on the floor and I just shower and rinse it off. So this is the finished look. It's probably only took a few minutes of actually using this. If you keep up with this, then you can just skip that whole prep part where we take everything down. But definitely recommend if you are prone to getting razor bumps or ingrown hairs, or you just want to try something new, definitely try one of these out. You don't have to go super expensive with these. You can get these for as little as 30, 40, 50 dollars for a nice one. This one is pretty expensive, but this is the one I use. So hope you found that helpful.